Right, good afternoon to you. Welcome. Uh, this is Relaunch. My name is Jerry, and uh, it's a pleasure to be back among you again, and a pleasure to welcome you to uh, Wednesday, the, the weekly opportunity we have in the middle of the day to uh, relaunch our lives. That's why we call it Relaunch. Uh, middle of the day, middle of the week, uh, we regularly find uh, no matter who we are, no matter how hard we try, things uh, just don't always work out quite the way that we think they will, and often we would like just to start all over again, and uh, we hope that uh, this provides an opportunity for you to do so. Uh, last week, Brian was here, and he was uh, launching us into um, the, the life and the story of a guy called Barnabas. We're going to follow through in that story. One of the things about Barnabas is uh, his, his ability, a guy in the Bible, his ability to, to kind of see things the way things really are. Um, we don't always see things the way they are. So I thought we might start today uh, just to, to see how alert you are to these things and, uh, and give you a, a kind of little test about your eyesight. So I'm going to put the screen for you, uh, a picture and a picture of trees and leaves. Um, but I wonder if you can see alongside the leaves, um, which really hit you hard. It's, it's all about leaves, but there is a bird there. Hands up if you see the bird. Okay, some of you see the bird. Hands up, you can't see the bird. Okay, um, that's honest, that's good. Okay, so um, I'll show you where the bird is. We'll just put a circle around it so you can see where the bird is. Uh, there we go. You see the bird now? Uh, you look at it and you think, yeah, that's, that's a picture of uh, trees with leaves. And, uh, and because you're seeing the leaves, it's difficult to see something else. So sticking with trees, we'll go on to the next picture, see if you can see anything beyond the, the trees here. It's pretty obvious these are trees. Uh, they're kind of sober birch, I think, that sort of thing. And uh, you're familiar with that. But there is an animal there. There is a wolf in the picture. Uh, and uh, can you see the wolf? Andrew, you can see the wolf. Yeah, Scott sees the wolf. And uh, we'll put a circle around it because that makes it easier. Okay, here's the circle around the wolf. Uh, stuck in beside the tree there, okay? You seeing the, the wolf now? Yeah, see the wolf? Yep, okay. Um, more trees, and uh, we'll try this one in the next picture, see how you get on with this one. Um, there is a butterfly here, but what you're likely to see is just the, the branches of the trees and the leaves. Some of you probably need actually to go to the optician. That's probably what, uh, what the problem is. And uh, you can book in an appointment. There are a few opticians in the, uh, the center of uh, the city, so you can try that as well. Uh, there's a butterfly there, and if you can't see the butterfly, don't worry. We'll circle the butterfly for you now. There's the butterfly there. Uh, it just blends in with the background, and uh, sometimes you can just look, and all you are seeing is what your eye immediately takes in. And that's probably true for the next one as well, which is the picture of the bark of a tree. But in that picture, there is also a snake. And uh, hands up, you can see the snake. Hands up, you're scared of snakes. Yeah, you're scared of snakes. Yep, okay. Um, so um, you look at a tree like that, you see the tree there, and, and you think immediately, no problem at all, but there is a snake. Hands up, you can see the snake. You can't see the snake. Uh, Michael can see the snake. That's good. Um, uh, we'll show you where the snake is. I I'll enlarge the picture as well for you. It is very well camouflaged. This will make you pretty scared to go into the garden. Uh, but there's the snake that, uh, that has just wedged itself in between the bark of the tree. And um, yeah, you didn't realize there was a snake there, but hey, there was a snake. And so in all these pictures of trees, you are looking for another animal, whether it was birds or wolves or um, a butterfly or a snake. Um, this next picture, uh, I wonder if you can see the bear in the picture. There is a bear in this picture, uh, and I wonder if you can see it. Uh, by this stage, most people are thinking um, uh, they must be really well camouflaged. And in a sense, this is a trick because it's, it's not a camouflaged bear at all. Uh, it's just the shape of a bear. So we'll, we'll circle it for you to put you out of your agony. Uh, it's way up there in the trees. It's, just, it's not a real bear this time. Uh, it's just a bear that happens to be formed by the branches. Um, and all of that simply reminds you that actually you can look at something quite closely, think that you've seen everything that's there, but actually miss uh, what may be the most significant part of it. And uh, that's really what uh, this particular part of Barnabas' story is, uh, is all about, the ability to see what's really there um, when uh, on the surface you, you might be inclined to see other things. 
Um, this is a story of, of uh, an occasion where Barnabas was sent uh, by the church in Jerusalem to uh, Antioch, a, a city um, a good way up the coast, the uh, east coast of the Mediterranean. Um, those who had been scattered by the persecution that broke out when Stephen was killed traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, spreading the word only among Jews. Some of them, however, men from Cyprus and Cyrene, went to Antioch and began to speak to Greeks also, telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. The Lord's hand was with them, and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. And news of this reached the church in Jerusalem, and they sent this guy Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived and saw what the grace of God had done, he was glad and encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. He was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. And so for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great numbers of people, and the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. Now, um, Barnabas, I say, was, uh, was a guy who was able to, to see uh, what was really going on. And in many ways, that's, that's always the challenge for us, what we choose to look at and what we choose to look for uh, in our lives, uh, in other people, and in the world in which we live. Uh, Barnabas saw and was looking for what God was doing, not what believers were doing. Um, you could have looked at what was going on in Antioch and thought, help, you know, this is, this is not the way it's meant to be done. Uh, there were a whole load of things that were technically, if you were a Jew, that were technically really pretty much out of order, uh, just not the way you do things. And Barnabas could quite easily have kind of looked at all of that and said, wow, you know, you guys are a mess. This is not how you do things. But he wasn't looking at what people were doing. He was looking at what God was doing. He saw uh, what the grace of God had done. Um, and so what he's looking at is, is not so much the faults of people, he's looking at the grace of God. And as the story moves on, we find that what Barnabas is doing is, is he is able to look to the future rather than to concentrate on the past. And, and that uh, is really what lies behind his going um, a little bit further around the coast to a place called Tarsus to look for this man, Saul. Now, we'll put a picture of Saul up for you. Um, if you were uh, a Jew living in those days, if you were a Christian living in those days, uh, the mention of the name Saul, um, you would have immediately been thinking, this is, this is a bad guy. This is a guy who has messed up good and proper. Uh, he was a man whose religious zeal had taken a pretty nasty turn and who persecuted Christians and who hounded them around and made life really difficult. He dragged them off, put them in prison, uh, made life miserable for Christians. And uh, if you were a Christian, you'd have written that word failure across him. And he, he met with the Lord, encountered the Lord, who stopped him in his tracks and basically told him, uh, you, you are um, messing things up good and proper. And you might have been inclined, therefore, to write Saul off as, uh, as a, uh, a liability, as a danger, as a failed, flawed individual. Um, and, and you could write that word readily across that man's life. Um, but if you're Barnabas, what you are seeing is not the word F-A-I-L-U-R-E. You are seeing within that, in amongst all the clutter that those letters combine to create those seven letters, in amongst those seven letters, there are four letters that actually are the real truth now about this man. And they are the, the, the letters F-I-R-E, the fire of God. That's what Barnabas was able to see, that uh, this was not just a guy who in his past was a failure, but a man on whom now the Spirit of God, the fire of the Spirit of God rested, and through whom God in the future uh, was clearly intent upon doing a significant work. And therefore, uh, Barnabas' perspective was to look much more towards the future and the future potential of this guy than the past history of this guy. Now, that's simply instructive for us in terms of, of how we view the world, how we view other people, and how we view ourselves. It's very easy simply to look at other people and to see their faults. 
Um, that's easy. Anyone can do that because everyone has their faults. We can look at the world and all that's going on in the world, see all the problems that there are, all the faults that there are, the people that we want to blame for this, that, and the next thing. And uh, uh, the, the, the um, example of Barnabas here helps us to see the importance of, of learning to look not at the faults of others, but at the grace of God to see what God is doing rather than what others are doing and to be able to see where, where this is all going to lead in the future rather than to concentrate on the past. So when you look at yourself in the mirror, if you are a believer, um, someone who simply trusts in Jesus, looks to Jesus, um, you could see yourself as a failure. Uh, you probably know better than anyone just how failed you are, uh, all the different ways in which you continue to fail, um, because that's true of all of us. Uh, in our attitudes, in our words, in our conduct, in our relationships, in our choices, right down the line, we, we fail uh, God, and we're conscious of that. And we can look at ourselves sometimes in the mirror, we see all that about ourselves, and we, we think, yeah, uh, failure. And we write ourselves off because of what is now past. And, and yet what the scriptures exhort us to do is to, to be able to recognize, while that may be true, if you are a believer, then certain things have happened. Jesus, as you trust in him, he, number one, he makes you a new person. Number two, he gives you a new life. And number three, he affords you a new future. Um, and that's the difference. The fire of God has fallen on you. Uh, you are now not only living life on your own, by your own strength, but living your life in the power of God's spirit. And uh, a lot of it has to do with, with how you view yourself. So yeah, you may have had a bad morning and you may have had a bad week so far, but uh, um, the, the truth about you is not just that you're a failure, um, it's actually as a believer that you are uh, filled with the spirit of God, the fire of the spirit of God, and and he leads you into a whole new future. And, and that's always the summons of the, the, the Bible as well, to exhort us to get our eyes on this Jesus, to see what he's done, to see what he does, and to see how he opens up for us, no matter who we are and what we've done, a new future. Let's then just take a moment to bow in prayer uh, before him. Lord Jesus, thank you for all that you have done. Thank you for the way that you've opened up a new future for us. We acknowledge that often we, we are pretty dim when it comes to the way that we look at things and tend to concentrate much more on that which is a failure in ourselves and in others. And we'd ask, please, you'd help us simply to get our eyes on you, on all that you are, all that you do, all that you've done, and all that you've promised you will yet do in the lives of those who trust you. Help us then to start out afresh today in that confidence and in that manner, living our lives by your strength, in your company, and for your glory. And we ask it for your own namesake. Amen. Good. Well, uh, enjoy the rest of your, your lunch. Um, enjoy the soup, the coffee, the chat, and everything. And uh, uh, enjoy the rest of the week as well. May God bless you all. Same to you, those joining online as well. Lovely to have you with us. God bless you too.